Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build an automation that lets you update your ChatGPT AI prompts without having to come into the automation to change the text. And without coming into the automation, you can update the model to say 3.5 to ChatGPT 4.0, or you could even replace ChatGPT altogether with Anthropic's Claude model or Perplexity, all without actually coming into the automation to make these changes. Making updates to a simple automation is pretty easy, but when your automations become more complex and you have a lot of ChatGPT automations where you might have to open up the automation and change a lot of the prompts individually or update the models from say ChatGPT 4 to 4.0 and you're doing this in multiple places it takes a lot of time and it's easy to make a mistake and break the automation altogether. With this automation I'm going to show you you can actually send the same prompt to multiple platforms like Perplexity, Claude, and ChatGPT and pick the response you want to use in your automation or essentially you can use Claude or Perplexity as a backup in case OpenAI ChatGPT goes down just like it did back in June where it was down for almost the entire day. With this automation here, if you have a problem with a single platform like OpenAI, it'll automatically move to Claude or Perplexity to keep everything running. And along the way, you're going to learn to build out your own Make API. Instead of calling Perplexity or ChatGPT directly, we're going to be calling our own API, this automation here, which will pull our system and user prompts directly from Airtable, where we declare which models we want to use on the various platforms. And then our API will reach out to the various platforms and will ultimately return a result so that we can finish out the job. First, let me show you how this automation works using a sample application I came up with called the Tweet Machine that would typically make calls to ChatGPT directly to generate tweets from a topic. And then after I demo that, I'm going to show you how to build out this entire automation step by step, including the supporting Airtable database and this sample Tweet Machine application. We'll first set it up using ChatGPT, then we'll replace ChatGPT with our own custom API. So back here in our sample application, the Tweet Machine, it's a very simple database where we can put in different tweet topics. And then when we run this automation, it will take the topic and generate 10 different tweets and then return them back to Airtable. Let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. Here I'm triggering the automation where it loads up the topics. Now it's going to loop through each of those three rows and generate the tweets and then drop them back into Airtable. We can see those getting dropped in right now. So everything worked as you'd expect. We can open this up and we're going to see our 10 different tweets that were based off of these topics. And so now if I wanted to generate five tweets instead of 10, I would need to come to the automation, open this up and replace the 10 here with five. And again, if I wanted to change the model from 3.5 to 4.0, I would need to do that here as well. And then I would need to save it, save the automation. I could clear out the results and then I could run the automation again. And then if we jump back to Airtable, we're not going to see the new results. And now again, I might not be happy because now it's using emojis. So I'd have to jump back into the automation, tell it not to use emojis, save the automation, clear out the results and then run it again. And then we could come back to Airtable and you'll see that it's adding in the new results without the emojis. So all pretty standard, but again, if you had a more complex automation with a lot of different chat GPT calls where you needed to update the prompt or the model all at once, it would be quite time consuming, especially if you had to go into all of these different modules and delete them and actually replace them with something like Claude or Perplexity. Going through all of these different modules and having to replace it with Perplexity would take a lot of time and it's going to break all of these automations. So instead of building the automation like this, where we call chat GPT directly, I use a different automation here, which calls our own API, the one that I showed you before. This HTTP module will call this webhook here. And instead of hard coding the prompt inside of the automation or selecting the prompt in the automation itself, we can build out our prompts here in the Airtable database. We can declare a system prompt and a user prompt, and then we can declare which models and platforms we want our prompt to be executed on. So in this case here, what we're telling the system is to first use ChatGPT, then to use Perplexity, and then also to run that prompt on Claude. And we could also swap out ChatGPT 4.0 for ChatGPT 3.0 five, just like that. But I'll put it back for our demo. And then we can also modify the strategy so that it's going to return all of the results instead of just one of them. So if one of them fails, we have a backup. And then we can also change the strategy to only return the first success. In that case, the automation is going to run in the order that we've defined here. And then as soon as it finds a success, it will automatically return that result back to our HTTP call where we can finish the job and write the tweets back to Airtable. So let's go ahead and demo this using this system here. I'm going to delete these tweets. I'm going to run this automation using our own API. I call. I'm going to go ahead and run this so we can watch it run. I'm going to trigger this automation. Here we can see the automation coming in and you can see it went ahead and used ChatGPT to run the prompt. And because our strategy was first success, it went ahead and returned that back to our API call here, where if we open up the result and we look inside the data, we can see that it returned two tweets. And that's simply because in the prompt itself, I said only return two tweets. Now, again, we've got all those emojis and we only have two tweets. So let me show you how much easier it is to change this. So right here, we can change this 
this to 10. You can also say do not use emojis in your response. And now I'm going to go ahead and change the response to return all. Now when I use return all, I'll go ahead and run this. We'll clear out these old results and then we'll trigger the automation again. Now if we look at the API call, it's calling chat GPT, then it's calling perplexity, and then it calls Claude as well in the order we've defined here. And so for each of these different topics in the tweet machine, it's going to run it against all of those models and return the result. Notice we don't have the emojis and we now have 10 different tweets. And if we look into the results of each of these calls, look into the data, we now see that we have three different results, one from OpenAPI ChatGPT, one from Perplexity, and also one from Anthropic Cloud. And then it also gives us the main result, which was the first one. But when we build out our automations, we have the freedom to use any of the different responses in the rest of the automation. Now, let me show you one other advantage of this. If we look at the results here, again, remember we have three different responses from the three different platforms. But again, let's just say that ChatGPT went down again, just like it did on June 5th. To simulate that, I'm going to change the API key to a key that I deleted. So this will simulate ChatGPT being down, but it could just be your API key got deleted or you have a billing problem. I'm going to go ahead and save the automation. Now, when we run this again, it's going to try to use ChatGPT. It's going to have a failure and then it's going to go ahead and move on to Perplexity and Claude. And then it's going to return the first successful result in that order, as well as all of the successful results because we're using the return all strategy. If I were to move this to first success, it would try ChatGPT, which would fail because I updated it to a dead key and then it would move on to perplexity. And if that succeeded, it would return that result. But I'll go ahead and move this back to return all. I'll come back to the tweet machine and remove these results. First, I'll run this once so we can watch it run. Then I'll trigger this automation. We'll jump back to our API. Notice it tried to use ChatGPT and failed. I can see that because it used the error handler here. And so then it went ahead and used perplexity and then it used Claude and then it returned those two results to us. So if we jump back to our automation here, it's running the second automation, but we can go in here and see the first operation. We'll look inside the data. Notice that the first call here is empty, but we have a second and a third from perplexity and Claude. And then we can see the result that it picked, which is going to be result number two, the first successful result. And then we can see it's returning the results from perplexity instead of ChatGPT. Don't get confused here that it says ChatGPT. That just happened to be the topic of our tweet. And then so if I were to change the model strategy to first success, clear out the tweets, and then run this again. Again, it's going to ask our API to run these against the different models. If we look into the results, into the first operation, and we look at the data, notice this time we are missing the first response, which was ChatGPT because it is down. Then it went ahead and grabbed perplexity, which we can see here. But because the strategy is first success, it didn't go ahead and return the option from Claude. And then we have the final result that we can count on here. So now that you know how this works, I'm going to go ahead and build out the entire Airtable database column by column. We'll build this sample tweet machine so that we have a test to run on. And then I'm going to show you step by step how to build out this entire automation. I'll build the whole thing from scratch. Now, if you'd like access to these make blueprints where you can simply import them, you just load them up and the entire automation opens up like that and access to this Airtable database so you can clone it instead of having to build it out step by step. Make sure to jump into my new community, the No Code Architects. We've got well over 300 members. It's super active and you can jump into the classroom, into the templates, and you can get access to these make blueprints for this video and a bunch of others that I've done, including this video here that allows you to automate faceless videos. The link is in the description below. All right, so first let's go ahead and build out our tweet machine example where we can put in our tweet topics, run this simple automation and return the results. Then we'll build out the Airtable that allows us to put in our prompts, declare our models and the strategy. And then we'll make the automation that serves as our own API call so that we can replace the direct call to ChatGPT to our own API that we are building out in Make. So I'm going to jump into Airtable. I'm going to create a new base. I'm going to start from scratch. Go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to Tweet machine demo. I'll change the color as well. Then all we need to do here is change this to tweet topic. It can be a single line text. I'll go ahead and delete these columns here. And then I'll rename this to tweets. I'll reformat this a little bit and then change the height to extra tall. Then I'll put in three different topics. Zapier versus make.com, chat GPT-5, and Airtable AI features. 
And it looks like I have a little spelling mistake there, tweet topics. All right, so now all we have to do is create a new scenario. We are going to start by loading up all of the rows in Airtable. We'll search the records. You'll have to add a new connection to the new base. Add connection, connection type OAuth. We'll call this the tweet machine demo. Save. You'll need to add the base. Tweet machine, I'm gonna grab the demo. We'll grant access. Then we simply need to update the base with the tweet machine demo. The table is table one. If you wanna rename this, you can generate tweets. If you refresh that, it'll refresh as well. Now I believe that's all we need. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. I'm gonna run this module, see if it comes back with our rows. Let's take a look. And there we have each of the three different rows with our tweet topics. So now we're gonna go ahead and add ChatGPT, OpenAI ChatGPT create a completion. If you don't already have a connection, you'll need to add one. I'm going to go ahead and pick the ChatGPT 4.0 system model. I'm going to add a message. I'll go with the role user. Then for the message, generate 10 tweets using the topic below. And then I'm going to simply add in the tweet topics. For max tokens, I'll put zero and then I'll click OK. Then we just need to write the result back to Airtable. I'll add another Airtable module, update record, choose a connection, tweet machine demo. Because we're doing an update instead of just a search, we need to update the permissions. So update the permissions. You're going to follow the same process. Just add the base, tweet machine demo, grant access, select the base, select the table, generate tweets. For the record, we're going to use the value from the initial module, the ID. We're not updating the tweet topics. We're actually updating the tweets themselves. And we're just going to add the result. Click into the field and add result. Go ahead and click OK. Then we'll go ahead and save the module. And we should be able to run this and see it update all of the tweets in each of these different rows. Run once. We grabbed the three rows and now it's going to loop through them. Process the first result. We can jump over to Airtable and now we can see the results in each of these where we have 10 different tweets with emojis, of course. ChatGPT loves emojis. And now we're done. We can go ahead and save this module. And now we can start to build out this automation and our Airtable base to support everything. And then we can come back to this automation and replace the chat GPT call to our own API call that we're about to build. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. It tells me what type of content you want more of. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is we need to build out this Airtable database so that we can store our system and user prompts and declare these different models and platforms and the model strategy so that we have something to connect up to our new automation here. So let's go ahead and start to build that out from scratch as well. I'm going to go to Airtable and create a new base from scratch. I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to go ahead and rename the base. AI hot swap demo, change the color. I need to rename this first column here, but before I can do that, I'm gonna go ahead and create an auto incrementing field. We're gonna call this ID. I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna pick auto number, create field. Then I'm gonna go ahead and update the name here. I'm gonna edit the field, I'm gonna rename it to prompt ID. Then I'm gonna change this to a formula, formula. And here you're gonna to wanna to put P for a prompt ID, and then we're gonna concatenate with the ampersand, the ID field. You can go ahead and select that, go ahead and save. So now we'll have these IDs here that will help us reference the different prompts that we're gonna add here. I'll we'll go ahead and adjust this. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this field, and I'm gonna edit these to be our system prompt, long text, readjust that a little bit, modify this to be our user prompt, Change this to long text, save. I'm gonna move this to extra tall. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this field and I'll add a new one. I'm gonna to link to another record. I'm gonna create a new table. I'm gonna rename the column to models. I'm gonna name the new table models. We'll allow linking to multiple records. We'll create the field. It's gonna create the table as well. From here, I'm gonna rename this table to prompts. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Then I'm gonna jump over to models and finish this out. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this column to model. We can leave it as a single line text. This column here was added automatically and links back to our prompts. So I'm just gonna rename it to prompts. We'll leave allow linking to multiple records and we'll click save. I'm gonna go ahead and hide that column. We don't need to see it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add the next field. This is gonna be platform. It can be single line text. 
create field. And then we need to add a special field here. And this field that I'm about to add is just going to make this automation run a bit smoother and use fewer operations. I'm going to call it platform with a colon model. Going to scroll down to formula. I'm going to concatenate the platform and the model. I misspelled that just platform model. So if I just start typing platform, I can just select that. Then I'm going to use an ampersand, a quote, I'm going to put in that colon and then I'm going to add the ampersand and put model. I can go ahead and use that here and then I can create the field. Now I don't really need to see this here either. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this field. And I actually forgot, I want to make this a single select field. So I'm going to go ahead and edit field, change this to single select, open AI, perplexity and anthropic. You want to change the colors, feel free. I'll go ahead and click save, confirm the change. And now when we add a new model, we can select from a specific platform. Now for myself, I'm going to come back to my Airtable database that I already have. And I'm going to copy these models just to make the demo easier to build. I'm going to copy them into this database. And then I'm going to select the platform open API. I'm going to fill down the platform and you can just copy these from the video, or you can access the name of all these models directly from the API documentation on each of the platforms. Here are all the models for open API using this URL here. Here are all the models for perplexity. And then using this URL here, here are all the models for anthropic cloud, but I'll go back to mine and just copy these directly. I'll update the platform to perplexity fill down. And then finally, Anthropic, I'll copy these in. I'll expand it in case you want to copy directly from the video. Select Anthropic, fill down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to group and just group it by platform. So it looks just like I have here. So now we're good to go. So if we come back to prompts, now if I put in a system prompt, you're a master copywriter for Twitter, give me 10 tweets on the topic below. That's our prompt. And then when we actually run the automation, we'll put the topic below. Then we can also come here and select our models. We can pick ChatGPT 4.0. We can pick perplexity and we can also pick anthropic cloud. Now we also need to add three lookup fields. So come up to this carrot, add lookup field. We are going to add all three of these model platform and platform model. Go ahead and add the three fields. We can go ahead and hide the model from models and the model colon model from models so that we're just left with the system prompt, the user prompt, the models and the platform. Now you can adjust these as you wish. I'm going to collapse this just like that. And now we've pretty much got what I have here except for the model strategy. So for this, I'm going to add a new field model strategy. This is going to be a single select field. And then we're going to add two options, return all which means when we run the automation, we're going to get all of the responses from all the models or first success, which means when we run the automation, we will only get the result from the first successful API call to one of these models. We can go ahead and color these if we wish. We can create that field. And now for model strategy, we can go ahead and select return all. We only need one prompt to build this out, but down the line, you can add as many prompts as you want. And again, what that will do is that it will allow you to store all of your prompts in this Airtable database and easily access them all, declare which models you want to use for those prompts instead of having to hard code everything into your automations. So this looks good to go. If we left anything out, we'll fix it as we build out the automation. All right, so now let's go ahead and start to build out this automation. I've got a blank scenario here. I'm going to go ahead and add in a webhook. You want to make sure you add in a custom webhook, not a custom mail hook. And you can go ahead and add that webhook. Go ahead and click save and OK. And I'm building this first module out here because ultimately we need to come back to our tweet machine automation and we need to replace the direct call to chat GPT to our automation here. Because again, what we basically did here was to create our own API. We can call our own API. It does all of the work and then it will respond back to our API call with the data that we collected here. So remember to continually save your automations. I'm going to save these two here and then I'm going to come into the webhook. I'm going to copy the address to clipboard. I'm going to come back to our tweet machine automation that fills in the tweets from the topics. I'm going to go ahead and remove the chat GPT call. I'm going to add in a new module. In this case, I'm going to use the HTTP module. We are going to make a request for the URL. I'm going to use the URL that we just copied from our new API that I copied right here. We can go ahead and leave this as the git method and we're going to add a query string. For the name, we're going to type prompt 
And for the value, what we're going to do is we are going to reference the prompt in our prompt and model database, which is P1. So we're going to add this variable P1, and then we're going to add the topic from our actual tweet machine database, which is right here, tweet topic. So again, let's take a second to understand what's going to happen in our automation here when we call this webhook. Now, the reason why I'm putting P1 here is because when we make this API call to our custom API that we've built, we can look up that P1 in our area table database and we can do that dynamically so we're going to look up this p1 at the time we actually run the automation so that it can look up these two prompts and replace that value into these api calls to our ai models so that when it runs, it's actually passing this prompt and not P1. And I use the curly braces here around the P1 just to make sure that the system knows that it's a variable and it doesn't get confused. If we were to use P1 in our tweet topic, it won't get confused because these curly brackets declare it as a variable. So in the final automation here, the P1 is gonna get replaced with give me 10 tweets on the topic below. So the P1 is gonna be replaced with give me 10 tweets with the topic below, and then we're gonna actually provide the topic below. Then we can go ahead and mark parse response as yes. We can leave body type blank and we can go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and save it now. It's going to give you a warning. Go ahead and save anyway. It's giving that warning because we broke the automation by changing out this module. It was referencing ChatGPT and that is now gone, replaced with our module. I'm going to go into Airtable here and just remove this and put a temp value in here so that we can run the automation. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to click save. Then I'm going to come back to our new automation. I'm going to run it once. I'm going to come back to our new API call and then I'm going to run this module only for the tweet topic. I'm going to go ahead and put Zapier versus make.com. I'm going to click OK. And I just wanted to run that once so that I can come back here and continue to build out the module. Now that we have a response, we can use this prompt variable to continue to build out our automation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a text parser. And pretty quickly here, you're going to see how we extract this P1 variable and replace it with the prompt. Go ahead and type text. You can use the text parser. You'll want to match a pattern. For the pattern, you can go ahead and copy this in just as I have it here. You want to make sure it's exact. You can leave the rest of these as is. Is for the text, you're going to want to add the prompt variable from step number one. And so what this module is doing is it's going to extract the P1 variable from this string so that we can look it up in Airtable. Go ahead and click OK. Next, we're going to search for records in Airtable. Go ahead and go to Airtable search records. You'll want to update the connection. This is the first time we're accessing our new Airtable base, so we'll need to add a new connection. Add connection, connection type, OAuth, connection name, go ahead and type AI hot swap demo, click save, add base, AI hot swap demo, grant access. Now you can go ahead and select your base and the tables, which is prompts. Now for the formula down here, we are going to search this field here, prompt ID. So we can come to the formula. You'll want to use the curly bracket prompt ID, close curly bracket equals quote, and then we're going to use this token here, dollar sign one with a close quote. And you're going to want to go ahead and limit this to one so that it doesn't find multiple entries. Although each of these prompt IDs is guaranteed to be unique. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at one just to be careful. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now just to make sure everything is working, I'm going to come back to my API call here. I'm going to go ahead and reconfigure everything. I'm going to run this module once, run module only. I'll type in Zapier versus make.com. I'm going to come back to our auto I'm going to run once and then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. It's going to make that call. It should come through to our new API that we're building. We can look inside. We got our prompt. Now we've got our text parser. We can see if it worked. You notice here that we passed in the P1 variable with the topic and then it returned back the P1. That is the P1 that we can use to search in our database here. So now we can look at the results and you can see here that it was able to look up this specific row given the P1 variable. So we're in good shape. We can continue on with our automation. Next up, I'm going to add an, a router. This is going to allow us to continue on with a thread where we connect with the AI models. And then this thread here will finally return the results once we're done. So I'll work on this upper line first. We're going to add an iterator, open that iterator. Here we're going to iterate through the platform colon model variable that we defined in our Airtable database. Go ahead and click OK. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get a variable. You can type variable, get variable, and I'm just going to simply type result. 
I'll explain a bit more about this down the line when it'll make a little bit more sense. For now, go ahead and just add it, click OK. Now we're going to add an additional router so we can call our different AI platforms. Go ahead and add the router here or click into flow control and add the router that way. In my example, I'm calling three different platforms. You could add more if you'd like, but first I recommend getting these first three working and then add them later. You only need one branch for each different platform, Perplexity, Anthropic, or OpenAI. And we only need one module per platform. The prompt itself will match Map in the model and add that into the module itself. So I'll go ahead and build out Perplexity first. Load up Perplexity, create a completion. If you don't already have a connection to Perplexity, you'll go ahead and add one. I'm going to use my active key. For testing, I have an active key and a dead key so that I can test the failover when there is a failure in each of these AI platforms. For now, I'm going to go with active key. And for the model, instead of selecting from the list, we are going to go ahead and turn on map, erase what we have here. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this in from my automation and then I'll explain it. If you remember when we built out our models, we had a field here which was grouping together the platform and the model separated by a colon. That value is now being passed from Airtable through our iterator and ultimately into our AI API calls. And you can see it here in our iterator. So we need to split this apart at the colon and that's what this is doing here. Now since I cut and paste this, I do need to remove this broken placeholder and replace it with this value here. And now if you're typing this manually, I'll show you how to do it. I'm gonna go down here just so I can type it. If you just start to type last and then open parentheses, you're gonna see it's gonna to start to build out the same thing that I cut and paste here. Then you could type split, open parentheses, Again, it's gonna add it. Then you can go ahead and put the cursor right here and click value. Then you could add this semicolon here. Notice it's adding the feature into the box. Then you could put in the semicolon and then you could add the two closing parentheses one, two. And then you have the same thing that I cut and paste into this field. And so what it's going to do is it's going to pass just this model into the model here so that perplexity uses the model that we defined in our prompt. And the reason why I did it this way is because it made the number of operations that we use in our automation smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and remove what I put in manually. And then when I move on to the next AI models, you'll simply repeat that same process for those as well. So now let's go ahead and add in the messages for content. I'm going to go ahead and add in the system prompt that is being passed from Airtable system prompt. And then for a role, I'll go ahead and click system. Then we're going to go ahead and add another message for the content. Again, we're going to have to use a special string here. And it's at this point here where we're actually replacing the P1 that came in from our API call, this P1 here, and replacing that from what we extracted from Airtable. So what's happening here is that we are replacing the variable, including the curly brackets, with the value from our text parser in the previous step and replacing that from the value in Airtable. Now, again, you're going to have to type this out unless you have the blueprint from the no code architects. And again, the way you would do this is you would just start to type replace and then you would use the prompt here. Then you would add the semicolon and then you're going to add the curly bracket. This value here from step two, close the curly bracket. Then you're going to add this semicolon. Then you're going to add the user prompt. And then finally, you're going to add the closing parenthesis. So if you're typing it manually, you'll see it's exactly what I cut and paste from below. I'll go ahead and just continue on from what I typed in manually. For a role, we're going to select user because this is the user prompt. And then I'll go ahead and click OK. Now we do need to add a filter here as well so that we are only moving forward if we actually selected a perplexity model and are using that platform. So here on this filter, we're going to go ahead and use the value that's in our iterator, which includes the platform. I'll use the value and then we're going to use a text operator contains. We're going to type perplexity. And then we're going to add an and rule and we need to copy this statement here. It looks complex, but all it's doing is it's checking the model strategy to determine whether it's return all or not so that it knows whether it should go down this path or not. I'm going to go ahead and copy this into this section here. You'll need to change this operator here to the Boolean operator equal to. And then I'll show you how to type this out yourself. But I'm going to go ahead and add this piece in before I go. If you come up here, you can add the keyword true. So what we're saying here is if the platform can contains perplexity and the model strategy is return all or we have no result yet because something failed, then go ahead and return true, which makes this whole statement true and then goes down this path. So if I were to type this out manually, I would come down here. I would type if open parenthesis and then I have to add another open parenthesis. You can add that right here. 
And then I'm going to come inside here. I need to add the model strategy. That's going to be right here, model strategy. And then we need an equal sign. I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to type in an equal sign. And then I need to add return all. Make sure you spell everything correct, return all. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this just so it's a little easier to see. Now I need to add the or, that's right here, in this section here, or we need another open and close parenthesis, that's right here. Now this result that's broken from my copy and paste is coming from this here. So in this automation, this is step number six. I'll add this result right here. Then we need an equal sign, come over back to this section here where we can grab an equals. And now we need a null, which is right here. Then finally, what we need to do is we need to add a semicolon here and a true statement, which we can find right there. And then we need one more semicolon and a false, which we can find right there. So just make sure you have exactly what I have right here, which I rebuilt from a cut and paste from my working module. Then I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything here just so we have just one statement and then I can go ahead and click OK. So now what's gonna happen is it's only gonna go down this path if the strategy is all return, or if in this case, ChatGPT failed and then it would move on to perplexity. So let's go ahead and build out the rest of this branch here and then we'll build out the other branches and then we'll go ahead and test everything. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and add a set multiple variables. So you wanna make sure you hit set multiple variables. Here, we're gonna add two variables. For the first one, you're gonna to wanna to use bundle order position. Make sure not to select total number of bundles, pick bundle order position. So it's essentially going to name the variable for what order of the loop we're in through this iterator. For the actual variable value, you want to click into this box here. Then we're going to go to choices, message, and content. And then for this variable name, we're going to go ahead and type result. And for the variable value, we are going to add the exact same output here, choices, message, content. And then we can go ahead and click OK. And then next, we're going to add an error handler. We are going to use the resume action. And what this lets us do is that if there is an error, it lets us set the variable on our own. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add choices. And we're going to go into message and content. And we're just going to add a null. So go inside the box come up to this value here and add null. Go ahead and click OK. And then we need to add a filter here where the condition is message. And then we can change this to does not contain 200. So it's basically saying, use this error handler when we do not get a 200 success back from the API. Go ahead and click OK. And now this portion of our call to perplexity should be complete. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to save. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in our API calls to Anthropic and ChatGPT. This should go a little bit faster now that we have some of these values mapped out. We can cut and paste some of them. It's going to make it a bit easier. So let's go ahead and add Anthropic Claude create a message. If you don't already have a connection, you'll want to add that. So now for the model, I'm going to go ahead and copy that from our perplexity model. I'm going to come to the model and just simply select that entire thing, copy, come back to Anthropic and again, turn on the map and copy that directly into this section here. This time, this placeholder is going to work without breaking because we are just simply copying it from the same automation, whereas the last time I copied it from a different automation. For max tokens, you can go ahead and put in 4096. For the message, you can go ahead and select role, user, and then you can add the content type equals text. And for the text, let's go ahead and add what we already put in perplexity. You go ahead and click OK. It's going to force you to put something. Just put temp OK. Then we can come back to perplexity and we can cut and paste this directly. Come back to Claude, replace this text here with what we copied from the perplexity module. And then we're going to go ahead and show advanced. And for system prompt, we're simply going to copy in the system prompt. Now we have everything we need here. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now we need to add the filter so that we only come down this path when we are using that specific platform. Again, here I'm going to use this value here. And we are going to look for text operator contains anthropic. And then we need to add this and rule. Again, I'm going to copy and paste what we used in this filter here, but I'll go ahead and adjust this. Scroll down to Boolean operators equal to, and then we can add in the true statement. Go ahead and click on this gear. True. I'll go ahead and click OK. I'm going to come to this filter here and copy everything from this section. Come back to this filter here and just simply paste it as is. Let's cross our fingers that we didn't make any mistakes <laughs> since we're copying it. Let's go ahead and click OK. Whatever happens, we will fix it. Now we need to do the same thing here. We're going to set multiple variables, set multiple variables. We're going to add two different variables. One of them is going to be 
the bundle order position and the variable value click into it will simply be the text response from Anthropic Claude. Then for variable name on item two, we're gonna type result and then we're going to go to the variable value and select the text response from Anthropic Claude. We can go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and again add an error handler here. We are going to use the resume where we can put in the value as if this was successful, even if there's an error. So we're gonna to go to text response. We're going to add in using the gear, the null value. We can go ahead and click OK. And then we can add the filter here, which is going to be message does not contain 200. I can click OK. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. I'm going to hit the little magic button here to align everything. And now we need to add one more path for ChatGPT. I'm going to come back to the router here. Let's go ahead and add ChatGPT, open AI, create a completion. If you don't already have a connection, you'll need to add one. You can leave select method as create a chat completion for model. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this just so I can go ahead and grab the model here, select copy, come back to ChatGPT for the model. Remember, you want to turn the map on. Go ahead and paste this in directly. Now we're going to go ahead and add the messages. For the first message, you can go ahead and pick system. And then for the message content, we're going to pick the system prompt. Then we can add an additional message. For the role, we'll pick user. And for the message content, we'll go ahead and put in temp. I'm going to put zero for the max tokens and click OK. I'm going to jump back to Anthropic just so I can copy this text here. It simply replaces that variable P1 with the actual user prompt. So I'll come back to ChatGPT and I'll paste in what we copied from Anthropic just to make it easier on us. And I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and adjust the filter. Again, for this first condition, we are going to use the value and we're going to change the text operator to contains. This time we're going to type open AI and then we're going to add an and rule for the text operator. I'm going to change this to Boolean operator to equal and then we'll update this to true by clicking on these gears and adding a true. I'll go ahead and click OK so I can copy the other value from this filter. I will select everything, copy it, come back to our filter and simply paste it into this box here. Everything should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I'm gonna go ahead and align everything just to keep things nice and tidy. I'm gonna go ahead and add the set multiple variables. Set multiple variables. We're gonna add those here. For the variable name, again, we are going to use the bundle order position. Don't use total. And then for the variable name, go ahead and click into it. We're going to use the result. And then for the second item, we're gonna type result. And then for the variable value, again, we're gonna use the same result here. And now we are done. We can go ahead and click OK. Now the final thing we need to do is we need to add the error handler to the chat GPT module, add error handler. We're going to use resume and we're simply going to add in a default result. Again, we're going to use null. So that means when chat GPT fails, the automation will continue and it will just use null for the result. And that's what these filters are doing here. When we go on to save the variable here, if the value is null, that is what allows these filters to continue on when it is looking for a successful result. So we can go ahead and click OK. The only thing we really have left to finish is the response back to our API call that we made here. But I'm going to go ahead and tidy things up and just make sure everything is working. So I'm going to come back to our Airtable database. Our model strategy is return all. So I'm going to come back to our automation. I'm going to go ahead and run once. I'm going to jump back to our API call right here. I'm going to go ahead and run this module only. For the tweet topic, I'm going to type Zapier versus make.com. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to jump back to our automation. We can see it's running. Looks like it made a call to ChatGPT. Then it made the call to Perplexity. And now it's making the call to Anthropic Claude. So let's just look at the results here. I'm going to go in here and I'm looking at the result here and it looks like it's saying GPT 4.0. So it looks like it didn't work there. If we look at the output message, it looks like we got the model wrong. So it looks like something's not working there. So let's look and see what model we sent it. Model GPT 4.0 and the message that we sent is the system. You're a master copywriter for Twitter and the actual prompt. It looks like the message that we gave it was ChatGPT 4.0, so that's not right. It looks like I just simply copied in the wrong value for the message content. So I'm gonna come back to Anthropic. You might've caught that. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy that here. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Now let's go ahead and just look at Anthropic. What did we get here? The text response, there's our 10 tweets. That's great. 
So if we look at what we sent them, we sent them the correct model. And then if we look into the messages here, we have the user content. And notice here that it no longer says P1, it's got give me 10 tweets on the topic below, and then it passes the actual topic. So it looks like Anthropic is working. Let's check out Perplexity. I'm gonna go ahead and come into this model. It looks like we sent the proper model. Let's look at the message. Got two messages here. System, you're a master copywriter for Twitter. Let's check the second message. And the actual prompt is give me 10 tweets on the topic below, Zapier versus make.com. Did we get the system message here in Anthropic? Let's just double check that. Let's just check inside. Okay, there's the system prompt. So everything looks good. We can go ahead and save this. Let's go ahead and run it once. Let's come back to our API call and run it this module only again. We'll type in Zapier versus make.com and we'll click OK. That's going to trigger our automation to run again. Now it's going to chat GPT. That's why it ran so fast the last time we were looking at it, it didn't actually run. So it looks like now if we come in here, we're actually getting a result, which is our tweets. It already went to perplexity, got the result. Now it's working on Claude and everything is looking good. So now I'm going to go ahead and save everything. And now we just need to finish this final branch. So in this next stage here, what we need to do is we need to get multiple variables. We need to pull up these variables that we set in these different routes. So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go ahead and type variable. You need get multiple variables. So if it's not listed, you can go ahead and just click into the tools. It's going to give you all the options, get multiple variables. So we're going to add four different variables here. In this case, we're going to add one, two, and three. And if you remember in these other variables, we set the variable to the position of the iterator, which is a number. And so now we're just loading those back up. And then again, remember in each of these set variables, we also always saved a variable called the result. So we're going to load the three different variables that we set by number and then that final result. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. I'm going to go ahead and run once. I'm going to jump back to the API call. I'm going to run this module only. I'm going to type Zapier versus make.com. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to jump back to our automation. Looks like it's running. We're calling ChatGPT right now. Set the variable. Now it's calling perplexity. Set the variable. Now it's calling Claude. Set the variable. And now it loaded up the variable. So if I come in here now, we should see four variables. One of these is from ChatGPT. One of these is perplexity. And one of these is Claude. And the order is going to be based off of the order that you set these models here. So if you were to delete ChatGPT here and add it at the bottom, it would just switch the order and it would now go to perplexity, Claude, and then ChatGPT. And then the result is always going to be the first response. I did make a mistake here, actually. I need to come back in here. This should not actually be set here. I'm going to go ahead and delete it. The final result that we use and that we pass back to the API call, this might be a little complicated to understand, but the result that we're actually storing here in the set multiple variables, we're setting this variable here so that we can look it up here so that we can use it in these filters. So if we set this variable to null and then we loop through the next time and we load up the result, which is what is here. If this is null, that is what allows the system to then use the next model in line when we are not using the return all strategy to continue on and finish. The result that we're going to actually pass back to this API call is actually going to be the first result that was successful. You don't fully need to understand it to get this working. But after you work with it a little bit, you'll understand what I mean. So again, make sure you come back into this section here and delete that result. We only want to load up these three variables. Next, we need to create a JSON variable to return back to our API call. So for that, we're gonna come and add another module. We're gonna type JSON. We're going to create a JSON. And then we're gonna go ahead and add a data structure. This is just gonna make it easier for us to drop in the data that we need here. Go ahead and click Add, AI, Hot Swap, JSON, and then we're going to add an item and we're going to add three more items here. For the first one, we're going to call the name one, then the second one's going to be named two, then the next one's going to be named three, and then the final one is going to be named result. We can go ahead and click save. And then for one, two, and three, we are going to use the variables that we pulled up in this get multiple variables. So we can simply come into this here and we can type one and then for two we'll go ahead and click into two and click two and then for three we can go ahead and click into three and we can use three now again we have this result that we created from here but then we deleted it but it's still showing up here you do not want to use that 
we are going to use an if then statement here, which is basically going to look up the values here and use the first response that is valid. So I'm gonna copy this from my module here and then we'll build it from scratch. I'm gonna come down to the result here, going to include it. Again, these are all gonna break because I'm copying it from a different module, but we'll type it from scratch. So we'll say if empty, open parenthesis, value one, then we'll use a semicolon. So basically we're saying, if this is empty, go ahead and continue on and use the next one, otherwise use this one. And then we'll type another if empty, open parenthesis, and then this time we are going to use number two. And I'll expand this out a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. Then I will use a semicolon, and then I will type if empty again, open parentheses, and then this time we're gonna use result number three, and then we can use a semicolon. And so basically what's gonna happen is it's gonna say if number one, number two, and number three are empty, let's go ahead and return null, null, and then we need to close the parentheses here, which are three of them, one, two, three. So we had three open parentheses, so we need three closing. So essentially this statement is saying, if this is empty, if result from whichever model is empty, then use the next one. If that one's empty, use the next one. And if they're all empty, just return null. And we can go ahead and delete what I cut and pasted. So you can build that out on your own. And then you just need to click OK. And then we got a little warning here. Let's check that out. It's just telling us that this should not be the last module in our automation, which it will not. I'm going to go ahead and add the last module that we need, which is a webhook. And this is going to be a webhook response. So we had the actual webhook that we called, and now we have to actually return so we're going to return status 200. And for the body, we're going to return the JSON that we created just in the previous step, JSON string. And then we do need to add a advanced setting and we're going to add a custom header, which is content type. And then for value, we're going to type application slash JSON. And then we can go ahead and click OK. And we can go ahead and save this automation. Everything should be good, but we'll go ahead and test everything to make sure everything is working as we expect. Now, if we come back to our API call, we've been calling this a couple of different times. We've never actually gotten a response. So we don't have the output data to use in our next stage. Remember, we put in, I believe, a temp in here just so we could save it. So let's go ahead and come back here and run this once. And we're going to come to our API call. We're going to run this module only. We're going to type in Zapier versus make.com. We'll go ahead and click OK. Let's jump back to our automation and just watch it run. This is always kind of fun to do. Remember, now it's going to perplexity because if you remember, we changed the order. So now it's going to perplexity first, then it's going to Claude, and then it's going to go to ChatGPT. Then it's going to swing back. It's going to get all the variables. It's going to build the JSON and then respond back to our API. Let's see what we got here. It's returning this body here, which is a JSON full of all these results. If I come back to our API call, should be able to look at the data now. And and as you might expect, we have three different results. Result one, result two, and result three. And this result here is going to be result number one. So again, this result is always going to be the first successful result. So when you're building out your automations, you can decide to use a specific model and you would know which model it is by the order that it is here. Or you can always just use the first result, which is this. So now we should be able to come in and complete our full automation. We're going to rename the tweets and we are simply going to put in the final result in this case. And then we can click OK, and then we can save it. And now we can come back to our tweet machine and we can remove these here. And we'll come to our API call. And this time, instead of just running this module, let's run the whole thing. Actually, I'm sure it erred because we don't have this automation turned on. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. It's gonna ask us if we wanna process old data. We just sent it a bunch of requests and I'm gonna go ahead and say no and delete old. And I'm gonna say yes, confirm. I get a little obsessive about saving. I'm gonna save it back out of the automation so we can actually see them running. I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna rerun it again. Now, if I jump back to that automation, we're gonna see this running through three different requests. For each request, it's gonna get three different results from the three different platforms, and then it's going to respond. We can come back to this and we can check and just make sure everything's coming through. If I jump back to the tweet machine, we should see our first result coming back. This one is from perplexity, again, because we set perplexity to be the first model. And then we got the result from the second request here. I think this came back from one of our failed tests. We can still see that the automation is finishing up, and then it finally put that in here. So now we can test the different configurations here 
here. So for instance, if I want to change the strategy to first success, so this time it's only going to return the first successful response. And just for testing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my automation here. And just for reminders, we're calling perplexity, then Claude, then ChatGPT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a specific error on perplexity. I'm going to change the key to a dead key. So before this demo here, I created a bunch of keys, created the connections, and then I deleted those keys so that I could test failures. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and then I'm going to click Save. So in this case, we're only returning the first success. So what should happen is when we run this automation, it should try to go to perplexity, it's going to fail, then it's going to go to Claude, and then it's not going to continue on to ChatGPT because Claude's going to have a success, and then it's not going to continue on. Let's just test that theory. Let's come back to our automation here. Let's go ahead and run this. It's gonna run through three different iterations. Let's check our automation. Let's back out. We can see it actually run. It's running here. Notice how it failed on perplexity, but then it still ran on Claude. Again, it's failing here because the key was dead. So if we were to actually look at the failed message, the error message did not equal 200. So if we actually look at the output, it's telling us authorization required, it failed. It set the variable to null. Because of that, it was able to look at this. It was able to get that variable. It was able to see in this first iteration that the result was empty. And because of that, even though our model strategy was the first success, so it's not trying to get all of them. And if we look in our model, it says, if model strategy is return all or the result is null, right? And so because it was null, it was able to continue forward. It requested it from Claude and then set the variable, but then did not continue on to ChatGPT. And then it returned the result back to our API. And then if we look at the results from the API and we look at the data, zoom in on the data here, we're gonna see that it had a failure on one, went ahead and used Claude to get the result, and then ultimately did not go on to ChatGPT to get a third result. And then again, this result is always the first result because in our creation of that JSON, again, we're always looking for first successful non-empty result. So now we're sure that the model and the order works and we have the model strategy being tested. Now let's see what happens if we were to change the user prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and just change this to, let's get three LinkedIn posts on the topic below. And you're a master copywriter for LinkedIn instead of Twitter. And now if we come back to our tweet machine, I'm going to go ahead and delete these tweets. Now it doesn't make sense. I'm not going to rename all these columns for LinkedIn. I just want to show the demo. I'm going to come back to our automation here. I'm going to go ahead and click run once. Then I'm going to come back. I'm going to exit out of the automation just so I can watch it running. Again, it's still failing on perplexity. It's then it's going to Claude and then it's going to cycle through. It's already done the first result. So if I come back to the tweet machine, now it's giving us LinkedIn posts instead of tweets. And there should only be post one, post two, and post three, because that's what we asked it to do. So you can see we can control the entire automation here simply by calling our own API and then building out the Airtable database to control the system prompt and the user prompt. We can change everything from here, including the models, the order that we call the models, and then also that model strategy, whether it is first success or return all. So there you go. And again, make sure to jump into the no code architects if you want to join a bunch of people building out these automations and you want access to all of these different templates, including the one you saw today, the make.com blueprints and that Airtable based templates. It'll speed things along. But either way, I'll see you in the next video.